Hi everyone, and welcome to my talk on non-interactive zero knowledge in parent-free groups from weaker assumptions. This is joint work with Shofra Kuto and Shichi Katsumata. In this paper, we present two results. The first is a non-interactive zero knowledge protocol in cyclic groups based on the one to the two to the three over four lambda, one-way key dependent message security of Algamal, and CDH. The second result is to show the existence of an infinitely often mystic in cyclic groups based on the 1 to the 2 to the 28 over 29 lambda, one way KDN security of Algamal, and now the exponent becomes worse, as you can see. Uh, and in this uh, presentation, I will mainly talk about the first result. So I know that you've seen the definitions already in the previous talk, so I'll be fast. Um, zero knowledge proofs are um, a protocol between a prover and a verifier. Um, with respect to an MP language, L, we have one statement X, and the prover wants to prove that this statement X belongs to the language, and the prover has a witness. And we want to have the following three properties. We want to have correctness. If the statement is in the language, then the verifier should accept. Soundness says that if the statement is not in the language, then the verifier should reject. And the knowledge says that if it accepts, then the verifier should not learn anything beyond the fact that X belongs to the language. So in particular, you should not learn any information uh, about the witness, for example. And in this paper, we care about uh, non-interactive zero knowledge, so MISIX. Um, in this context, there is a common reference string, which is given to the prover and the verifier. And the entire interaction, interaction consists in one message sent from the prover to the verifier, which we call the proof. These uh, NISICs um, are a very important cryptographic primitive and have been constructed from a variety of cryptographic assumptions, from factorization, pairing groups, and more recently from breakthrough results, which based NISICs on LWE and circularly secure LWE. But an open problem is whether we can build NISICs from, group, from groups where, let's say, discrete log is hard. So can we build NISICs in groups without pairings? So we can think here, DDH groups, CDH groups, or maybe just groups where the discrete logarithm is hard, and we don't want pairings. And a series of recent work has actually made progress on this. And I want to mention first this paper from 2018, which constructs statistics based on strong KDM security. Here, the adversary is given an Elkama ciphertext that encrypts this message M, and M is a function of the key. And we want that the adversary recovers the key. And the advantage should be smaller recall than S of lambda over 2 to the lambda for all superpolynomial functions S of lambda. Now, this assumption must hold with respect to all even uncomputable functions F. So this means that the assumption has an unfalsifiable flavor. And just to recall briefly what that meant, falsifiable meant that the challenger is able to efficiently determine whether the adversary broke the assumption or not. And since these functions are uncomputable, the assumption has an unfalsifiable flavor. Now, this has been improved in a subsequent work. And as you can see here, the assumption now has to only hold with respect to a fine function set. And this is a falsifiable flavor assumption, but because this, this advantage here is very small, we still, the, the, the challenger still cannot efficiently determine whether the adversary broke it, broke the assumption. So we only say that it's falsifiable flavor because we can write it as a game between the challenger and the adversary. And this is better assumption is based on something called almost optimal security. And we want to improve on that because this advantage here is so small in recovering the key that any improvement in the exponent for generic attacks would be very bad and would break the assumption. And what we do in this work, first our assumption becomes a little bit worse because instead of having to rely on fine functions, we have to rely on all randomized efficient functions. So the assumption must hold with respect to all randomized efficient functions. But on the other hand, we improve the exponent from two to the lambda to two to the three over four lambda. 
so here the the smaller the exponent the better the assumption the weaker and because our adversary is only required to recover f of k so the message that was encrypted and not the entire key then we say that this assumption is one way uh, key dependent message security so the adversary doesn't have to recover the entire initial key but uh, exactly what was encrypted and as I mentioned, we, apart from the one to the two, to the three over four lambda, one way KDN security of El Gamal, we also rely on CDH. And why was it bad to have almost optimal security? So why was it bad to have the S of lambda over two to the lambda before? This was because the best generic attack, ROPOLAR, is known to give a polynomial advantage over uh, just guessing. So, advantage is poly of lambda over two to the lambda. And if we manage to improve the exponent here in our assumption, we have an exponential gap between the previous best assumption that was used to construct physics in this uh, pairing free groups and our assumption. But I want to mention that these physics from the previous paper are more general while we only restrict ourselves to cyclic groups. So now we have reached the construction overview. So I will briefly descri uh, describe the blueprint. Basically, we start, the, we have three stages. The first one is to start with the SIMA protocol for restricted language. So I noted as LDH, uh, which will be a Diffie-Hellman language that I will describe later. Then in the second stage, we use the fiat channel transform, as has been done in a series of recent works. And the fiat channel transform, just to recall it, was to compute the second flow as a hash of the first flow. So it used a random oracle. And the second flow was the hash of the first flow. And all these recent works have translated this random oracle, instantiated it with the correlation intractable hash function. And then the resulting schemes are physics in the standard model. And what we do, since the correlation tractable hash function is applied on this restricted Diffie-Hellman language, then we obtain uh, Diffie-Hellman music. So then the third stage is about how can we push up this Diffie-Hellman music to a music that covers the whole of MP. And for this, we construct what, um, we, what is known as a VPRG, a verifiable pseudo random generator. And we use this previous result by Dwork and Nauer from the 2000s that says that VPRGs and hidden bits mystics result in CRS mystics for the whole of MP. And since hidden bits mystics are known to hold unconditionally, then our VPRG is enough to, uh, to use this previous result and obtain CRS mystics for MP. What is the key intuition of our scheme? The previous work that I mentioned used the fiat channel transform on a SIMA protocol that worked for an MP complete language. So it covered the whole of MP. And then it, it replaced the random oracle with a correlation tractable hash function. This meant that they directly obtained an ISIC for the whole of MP. But now, if we look at the proofs that we have right now, the proof techniques that are available to us, we can make the observation that the assumption quality will relate to the size, to the, to the rate between the size of the first flow in our SIMA protocol and the challenge size in our SIMA protocol. So size of first flow over the uh, challenge size. And unfortunately, all the known SIMA protocols that we have for MP have very large first flows. So this results in big losses in our assumption, so worse assumptions. And our idea is to get around this somehow. And basically what we do is to look instead of restricted SIMA protocols that have nice good rates. So good rate of the first flow size over the challenge size. We obtain uh, an, an ISIC for this restricted language. And then we deal with extending to MP using other techniques. So as I mentioned, using the VPRG. And here I want to mention one technical detail. If 
we were just to use any uh, restricted schema protocol trivially, it's likely that our assumption remains non falsifiable. So, for example, if we use this Diffie Hellman protocol, trivially, our assumption will be non falsifiable because the relation for the correlation tractable hash function, this is very technical, um, the, the relation for, for the correlation tractable hash function will, cor will correspond to inefficient functions because uh, the function will have to compute a discrete logarithm. So then the assumption is unfalsifiable and we work around this um, and you can see the solution in our paper. But uh, and basically from inefficient functions, we managed to get to randomized efficient functions. So what was the first step? Uh, uh, we constructed the schema protocol for this Diffie-Hellman language. The Diffie-Hellman language is defined with respect to two generators, J and H. And words have two more elements, X and Y. And we say that the word belongs to the language when the exponent is the same here. So when they have the same discrete log with respect to the generators G and the generator H. So X is the same. And now how does the similar protocol look like to prove that the statement is in this language? We, the prover first samples random R from ZP, uniformly random R. Then it constructs the corresponding word, so G to the R, H to the R. It sends this to the verifier, which computes a challenge uniformly at random from ZP star, sends this to the prover. Now the prover computes this D, which is a masking of the witness X with E and R, sends it to the verifier. And the verifier, the verifier actually checks that this secret masking of uh, the witness corresponds to the public information that it uh, already obtained, information that, already, that it already obtained from the protocol. And it can be shown that this is uh, both sound and zero knowledge. Actually, we will have to do two repetitions of that protocol in order to achieve adapted, zero, uh, adapted uh, soundness, which is what we need for the PPRG. And now in the second step, we want to compile this schema protocol to uh, NISIC. So here we use the correlation tractable hash function. So this hash function is defined on a key space and an input space, and it outputs values in an output space O, and it's defined with respect to a binary relation, which is included in I times O. And we want that for all non-uniform PPT adversaries add, the probability that any efficient adversary finds an X such that X and its hash belong to the binary relation should be negligible. But this obviously does not hold for any relation and you can think of the trivial relation where everything is in relation with everything because then anything is a solution for X and Y belongs to the relation. So basically what we want is to have some additional property on the relation. And this is sparsity. And we say that a relation is sparse if for all x is in the input space, we have that there is only an negligible fraction of y's which are in relation with x. So then this probability when y is sampled uniformly is negligible. So small, a very a negligible fraction of y's are in relation with x. And looking ahead, we want actually that the relation of the SIMA protocol is sparse. Um, and the relation with the SIMA protocol will consist of pairs, first flow and second flow. And this has been defined in previous work like this. And it, uh, such that there exists a third flow of the SIMA protocols that leads to acceptance. And as I mentioned, uh, it can be shown that the SIMA protocol described before uh, has a sparse relation. And now we I recall that the prover will sample the first flow as usual and will set the second flow as the hash of the first flow. And we want that the relation, um, the sparsity of the relation is preserved by H as a figure of speech. And this is basically just what the correlation tractable property of H says. And then what this at an intuitive level would mean is that any adversary cannot really break, um, break the music by attacking the hash function but it will have to attack the underlying SIMA protocol. So then we'll have soundness coming from the soundness of the underlying SIMA protocol. And in the security proof, 
uh, in the analysis, this is where the good traits of our PIC SIMA protocol will come into play. So we talked about soundness. Now I also want to mention programmability. And here, programmability mean, uh, it has been defined in previous work, and it uh, means that given an input X and an output Y, we should be able to efficiently find a key that's distributed uniformly at random, such that uh, X is mapped to Y. And this helps with zero knowledge, because basically, once we, we, are, we are able to find these keys which map X to Y, our a simulator for the NISIC will use the simulator for the, for the SIMA protocol to find an accepted transcript, and then find the key that maps the first flow to the second flow. flow. So let's look a bit at what the correlation of tractable hash function, what is its uh, actual description. It's very similar to the one used uh, in this previous paper. Basically, the hashing key is an Elkamal ciphertext, so C0, C1. The input to the hash is an Elkamal key. So the input is the key, and the, ha the hashing key is a ciphertext. And now the hash function represents this Elgamal decryption this partial Elgamal decryption. So it's a partial Elgamal decryption because it doesn't recover the discrete log. And then it interprets this as bits, as bits and it uh, takes just the first half of the bits. And using this correlation tractable hash function, we transform the SIMA protocol into uh, secure NISIC. And we can show that it is secure. But the question remains how to construct NISICs for MP. And as I mentioned before, this is the third step of the verify of pseudo random generator. So as I mentioned, we know that VPRGs and hidden bits NISICs imply CRS NISICs from previous results. And now I want to intuitively describe what is a VPRG. Just as the pseudo random generator, the string that is being output has pseudo randomness. But we also want that the party that generates the random string can selectively open some of the bits and then generate proofs that these bits have actually been computed honestly. And all of this happens while the other bits that are not opened remain hidden. And this allows someone to implement exactly this hidden bits model. So some bits remain hidden and, they, and some are being opened and the ones that are being opened are provably opened. So for the second contribution, we want to remove CDH from our construction. And the reason for this is because as far as we can see, the KTM assumption we use and the KTM assumptions used in previous schemes seem to be symmetric key style assumptions. And this is interesting because so far, we don't know about uh, how to construct NISICs that are, are constructed from assumptions that do not imply public encryption. So all the needs, most of the needs that we know are constructed from assumptions that imply public encryption. And these assumptions are one of the exceptions. So removing CDH is interesting then because CDH implies public encryption and we want to still preserve this symmetric uh, key style assumption flavor of the previous constructions. So as I mentioned, our second result is the existence of an infinitely often NISIC in cyclic groups, which is based on the one to the two to the 28 over 29 lambda, one way KDN security of Elgama. And now what infinitely often is, it just means that unlike uh, the more traditional, more widely used uh, asymptotic security, here we all can only guarantee that um, the security holds for infinitely, uh, for infinitely many parameters. And that, let's say, we, if we are at the level of security and we want to increase, to increase this level, there might be gaps until we find the next one. So we, we might need to, to, to increase a lot the security parameter, but we are guaranteed that at some point there will be one. So infinitely many. Um, and how do we do this? Uh, the blueprint is very similar. We construct a SIMA protocol for a language of short elements, which I will briefly, um, I will, I will briefly mention afterwards what, what kind of, sh what do we mean by shortness? And then, as before, I use the fiat channel transform and we use a fiat channel transform and we replace the hash function with correlation tractable hash function. 
just as done in recent work. This allows us to obtain a NISIG for this language of short elements. And then we use this NISIG for the language of short elements to construct a VPRG as before. And now in this step, we use this low depth to the random generators of Lombardi and Vine Contanata. And as I mentioned, once we have the VPRG, we have the NISIG for the whole of NP. So the key idea for this third step is to notice that if, so we, we know what happens when CTH holds, and now we want to see what would happen if CTH does not hold. So we assume that CTH is insecure, and this is where the infinitely often security uh, will appear from. And we know from previous work that if CTH does not hold, this can be compiled, the adversary against CTH can be compiled into a self-pairing. And using this previous work, we, we combine this with the low depth of the random generators to homomorphically compute low depth PRGs in the exponent. And this, along with the NISIS for the short language, will yield uh, verifiable to the random generators. And as, as I mentioned, this will lead to this is for MP. So now what did I mean by short? This is related to the short exponent discrete logarithm assumption which is at the core of this second construction. Basically here we have a group of G of order P. Then the exponent now is, is instead of being from zero to P is from zero to P over T. So it's a short exponent. And we want that no PPT adversary can recover X from G to the X. And of course, this can only happen if this range is super polynomial, but we hope that once this is the case, then this assumption uh, is, um, is secure. And this concludes my talk. Uh, thank you for your attention. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all during the discussion panel. Thank you.